the Biden administration has been fairly clear that even when our on the ground military presence leaves, that we're not going to abandon Afghanistan, that we will still be providing, we may or may not provide air support. I think that remains to be seen, but we will certainly provide intelligence support. We will be in the neighborhood, um, you know, at least compared to the Upper West Side of Manhattan, um, you know, we'll be in the neighborhood uh, and not too far. So we can intervene in a targeted way and maybe help prevent uh, some attacks, at least if we get wind of them and can, can uh, um, take action from the air. So as long as we do that, um, I think we will certainly not solve any major problems, but we might be able to do some good in um, preventing some attacks from taking place. But you know, the reality is we have lost. Uh, we're not framing it that way. I understand the politics of that. And I, I understand why President Biden says that we've achieved all our goals there. I disagree with that. I actually think that the war, we achieved none of our goals. We achieved some of them, but just not because of the war in Afghanistan. Um, and certainly we could have achieved them without it. And you know, I think we have to accept the reality that to one degree or another, the Taliban will be significantly more powerful when we go. They will be a part, at least a major part of the Afghan government and possibly be the Afghan government if they defeat the Afghan uh, uh, national army uh, on the battlefield and if they successfully take Kabul. And I think there are some good arguments as to why that might not happen but I think we are fooling ourselves if we think that the Taliban are not going to be the dominant force in Afghan politics indefinitely. What that means and how that looks in terms of the, the government itself, I, I, I think probably remains to be seen. And how violent things are before then also remains to be seen, but you know, we will have left after 20 years with the Taliban back in power or imminently in power and more members of Al Qaeda worldwide than there were on September 10th, 2001. So we have done a very good job of degrading Al Qaeda's capabilities because you know, to be honest, I don't really care how many people are in Al Qaeda if they don't actually have the capability to attack us. You know, they can dream about it all they want. So we've degraded their capabilities. We've eliminated a lot of their high ranking people, which is both a blow to morale, but also institutional memory and planning and things like that. But did we do that because we were in Afghanistan? Well, maybe uh, in, in terms of small numbers of special forces, intelligence, drone strikes, things like that. But did that require the actual invasion and 20 year presence there? I don't think it did. And of course, we all know that bin Laden was not ultimate, bin Laden escaped it from Afghanistan. And we were able to get him any, you know, anyway but I'm not, uh, I, I suspect we could have gotten him in the same amount of time had we not invaded. Um, so I don't see us really as achieving any of the goals that the Bush administration set, but we did actually make lives better for a lot of people. And that is important. It isn't necessarily a core national interest of the United States, but Abandoning those people, I would argue, is, is also not in our interest. 